Blender 4.0 is set to drop next month. I've got my calendar marked and I'm eagerly awaiting every detail. This video will give us the inside scoop on everything we know about it so far. Now I know what you're thinking. Don't get your hopes up for a total UI overhaul. From the sounds of it, the changes will be pretty minimal compared to 3.6, but there are some tweaks in the works for the properties editor, specifically that unruly modifier tab. Rumor has it, it could get a makeover to look more like a list with properties underneath, kinda like the material tab. Cleaner and simpler, am I right? This would get rid of the separate physics and particle tabs finally, and better communicate how modifiers interact. I'd call that a win in my book. Now for some fun new features to look forward to. A bigger color picker is always appreciated. Ooh, and we'll be able to pick colors outside of Blender itself. No more squinting at your object's hue. Saving incrementally. SVG previews in the file browser. A better snapping menu. Node previews on top. Lots of little improvements that should smooth out the workflow. The clunky old auto smooth system. It's being replaced by some slick new tools for splitting normals, destructively or non-destructively. No more enabling auto smooth and trying to dial in that perfect angle before marking edges as sharp. No, now you can just mark them sharp right off the bat. Freedom at last. The only other big modeling change is the ability to define custom snap points while transforming stuff. Super helpful for precision work. Oh, and you'll be able to navigate around the 3D view mid-transformation by holding Alt. I'd call that a modeling quality of life upgrade. Between the normals overhaul and other improvements, texture artists and modelers rejoice. Blender 4.0 is bringing some serious goodies your way. No more fighting against the system trying to get your surfaces just right. The sculpt mode hotkeys are getting overhauled for more consistency with the rest of Blender. Less key combo confusion? Yes, please. I know some of you still avoid sculpting like the plague, and hey, no judgment. But with these dynamic topology improvements, you may finally feel brave enough to give it a try. No more worrying about losing your carefully crafted edge work or textures. Just grab those digital clay tools and start shaping away. The new DT will keep your existing mesh details intact. Now you can run any node operation multiple times per frame. Hello Endless Possibilities. Node interfaces will also get collapsible sections. Manage those huge groups and modifiers easier by folding away what you don't need. The new Repeat Zone node is a game changer. It lets you repeat any node operation multiple times per frame. Huge for iterative effects. There's also the addition of collapsible sections in node groups, so you can neatly organize large, complex nodes. No more tangled spaghetti mess. For you math-minded folks, rotation data is getting its own socket type to keep degrees and radians separated. Makes working with angles much cleaner. Of course, we can expect tons of handy new utility nodes too. I'm particularly hyped for the set custom normals node for detailed normal editing on mesh. Combined with the new instancing support, this unlocks all kinds of procedural geometry possibilities. Pre-2.8 era, bone layers have officially been replaced by bone collections. Bone collections are so much more flexible and intuitive for managing your bones. You can put any bones into collections without restricting them to a single layer. This brings rig organization more in line with Blender's collection system for objects. Set up collections for things like limbs, torso, fingers, whatever makes sense for your rig. Having bones in collections also makes them easy to quickly select and isolate within the viewport. No more hassle toggling opaque bone layers on and off. Some sweet improvements are coming to the graph editor to make working with poses and keyframes way smoother. For blending between poses, new slider controls let you easily combine and tweak your keyframed poses right in the graph editor. No more frustrating manual tweaking of curves. There are also major performance upgrades when working with tons of animation keys. Animating complex long form shots with hundreds of keys should see a big speed boost. As someone who spent their fair share of time fighting against the graph editor, these changes will be a godsend. The new blending tools combined with faster playback with heavy keyframes will seriously improve workflow. Some super exciting news for Grease Pencil fans, the Blender team is currently rewriting it again from the ground up for the third time. This major overhaul aims to allow better interoperability with other software, boost performance, and deepen integration with geometry nodes. EV and more. Just imagine the possibilities. Linking GP animations across programs, faster strokes on complex scenes, using nodes to control strokes, realistic materials, shadows. It's going to take GP to the next level. Now, whether this new iteration will actually be done in time for the Blender 4.0 release is still up in the air. 
it may get pushed back to 4.1 or 4.2 depending on progress. As a heavy user of the library overrides myself, I've definitely experienced the headaches that can come with trying to parent them. It can lead to weird inconsistencies and crashes when working across multiple blend files. Super frustrating. But with the improvements coming in 4.0, we can rejoice. Parenting overrides will behave way more reliably, even in complex nested hierarchies. No more crashes or glitchy behavior. Now, originally, massive EV shadows slash volume slash lighting updates were slated for 4.0 but those have been pushed back to the 4.1 release. Bummer, I know. But some other cool features are still coming in 4.0. For one, the principled shader is getting a big accuracy and usability pass. Say goodbye to weird artifacts. It'll behave much more like the real-world physical shader it's meant to mimic. The anisotropic shader is going away, with its controls getting folded into the glossy shader instead. Clever consolidation there by the Blender team. Velvet is also getting renamed to the more intuitive sheen shader, and it will finally produce realistic soft cloth-like highlights in cycles. Hooray! Lights themselves are receiving UV coordinates too for advanced texturing control, and noise Voronoi textures get handy new tweakability. So while the big EV update got postponed, 4.0 still has plenty of render and shader improvements up its sleeve. Let me know which one you're most excited to try out in your scenes. Major rendering upgrades to light linking finally coming to cycles. This lets you specify which objects each light affects. Huge for controlling renders. Path guiding with glossy materials is also here for cleaner reflections and less noise. Say goodbye to Firefly artifacts. The default color transform switches from filmic to the more natural AGX, which handles brights, darks, and saturation better. It'll pair nicely with eventual spectral rendering support. For Mac users, HDR viewport output is now supported with the standard transform. Crank up that dynamic range. And for add-on devs, USD Hydra support will encourage more third-party render engine integration. More rendering options benefit us all. We're getting a new Kuahara filter node that lets you instantly add stylized painterly effects to renders. This filter gives your images a cool artistic vibe, like a painting or abstract artwork. It uses a clever technique to simplify details and emphasize broad strokes and shapes. I love how the Kuahara filter can transform a regular 3D render into something with way more visual interest. It immediately catches the eye with its bold handcrafted look. And because it's a node, you can apply the effect non-destructively right in the compositor. Tweak the settings to control the abstract painterly appearance. The new retiming feature, which lets you speed up or slow down clips right in the timeline. You can add multiple control points on each clip too, so no more splitting just to adjust timing. This is going to be a game changer for quickly tweaking clip pacing and rhythm. Streamlined retiming controls were sorely needed in the VSE. For you audio engineers, sound strips will now get equalizer modifiers for tone and frequency adjustments. Dial in the perfect mix right in Blender. Quick heads up on some changes coming to Blender system requirements in version 4.0. On Linux and Windows, the minimum OpenGL version bumped up to 4.3, so be sure your GPU drivers are up to date before upgrading. Support has also been dropped for older Intel HD 4000 integrated graphics. Unfortunately, it's just not powerful enough to keep up anymore. For Mac users, Blender now requires a Metal 2.2 compatible GPU and Mac OS version. No more relying on integrated graphics either. While not a total overhaul, Blender 4.0 still makes some big strides forward. It delivers meaningful improvements to user experience, capabilities, and performance. This update keeps momentum going towards a Blender that's faster, more intuitive, and more powerful with each release. The devs are laser focused on polish and refinement. So get excited for 4.0. It may not be the flashiest update, but the thoughtful enhancements will really pay off in your workflows. Can't wait to see where Blender goes next. You can download free Blender add-ins and tutorials through the links in the description. That's it from me and thanks for watching.